everyone, it's Lucy Fink. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. I am so excited about today's video because I'm about to share with you 33 things that you possibly, probably don't know about me. If you've been following me for years and years and you've watched every single one of my videos, there might be one or two things in this video that I've already shared in passing before. If this is your first time coming to my YouTube channel, hello, welcome, where have you been? Hit that red subscribe button down below to join my YouTube family so you can be alerted every time new videos go live, which is every week. And give this video a thumbs up if you like the topic and you're excited for me to dive in, just to let me know that you wanna see more videos like this one. Thank you so much to Fabletics for sponsoring today's video. Believe it or not, this adorable sweater with buttons that I'm wearing is from Fabletics. I know a lot of people think they only make workout clothing, but their loungewear and their everyday lifestyle clothing is killing it. I'm gonna share a lot from their May collection later in the video, so stay tuned. All right, let's dive in. 33 things that you maybe don't know about me. Number one, I was in a Cobra Starship music video. Throughout the years, I've actually received a lot of DMs from people saying, hey, I was just watching this old Cobra Starship music video for the song, You Make Me Feel, and it kind of looks like you. Is this you? And they'll send me a screenshot. And yes, that is me. <laughs> Years and years ago, when I was still in college, one of my really good friends was an intern at the record label that produced that music video. We were pretty much just like extras on the set, kind of in the background. It was supposed to be like a club vibe, so we were just kind of hanging out and pretending to be drinking and stuff. We weren't actually drinking. We were under 21 at the time. A couple months later, the music video came out and we made it in. Number two, you probably already know that I was in an acapella group in college. My acapella group was called The Mental Notes. It was the comedy acapella group on campus. And when you're a senior in the acapella group, you get to choose a solo. Most people choose like legitimate songs, not parodies. But for my senior solo, I chose a song called Remarkable Vagina. <laughs> it is not a melodic tune that really shows off the vocals, but it is hilarious. Taryn Southern is the writer of this song. She's a comedian, she's a singer. And there was a time where you could search on YouTube and watch the video. I just tried it and for some reason I'm unable to find it. But fun fact is that I sang Remarkable vagina for my senior solo. Three, if you follow me on Instagram, you've probably seen this on my stories. I did post this recently. Summer 2008, when I was at summer camp, I was in the upper camp play and I played Alphaba in Wicked. I have some video clips that I can share here. <laughs> My entire body was painted green from head to toe. And I thought that the stage was like a Broadway stage setup, but now that I watch the footage, I'm basically like rigged up to a few ropes holding a broom between my legs, and it's pretty anticlimactic. <laughs> Number four, I have no frenulum. Most people have a little flap of skin or something that's connecting their tongue to the bottom of their mouth. And when they lift their tongue up, there's like a line, like a visible line in there. For me, when I lift my tongue back, there is absolutely no line connecting my tongue to the bottom of my mouth. I don't know, just a weird thing. Number five. When I was really young, I went on a family vacation to Aruba. I was playing a game with my brother on the beach one night. It was kind of like a hide and seek game with his older friends. And I was sort of hiding next to this towel hut where out of the corner of my eye, I saw a person was there. That person happened to be a drunk teenage boy. And he stood up, came over to me and just drop kicked me in the head. I was about, I don't know, 80 pounds, very young, and I just went flying across the beach. More than anything else, I was shocked. I don't even remember it hurting that badly. I just remember looking up and seeing this like young guy stumbling away, just being scared that I didn't know what, what he was doing or what had just happened and I had just gotten kicked in the head, but I'm fine. Number six, I went to circus camp as a little kid. Allie and I went together, and I don't really remember if I have these memories in my head or if I just have videos that I'm remembering, but we went to this camp that basically took place, it was a day camp inside of a giant gymnasium with all these mats laid out, and we did things like spinning plates and flying on the trapeze. Number seven, I have discovered numerous gray hairs for the first time 
this year, in 2021. But there was one that was really an outlier. It was just kind of really sticking out and I would notice it every time my hair was dry. And Michael and I actually nicknamed this hair Grey Poupon. Unsure if you know the mustard Grey Poupon. It's one of my favorite mustards. But that's what we named my gray hair. And then we've actually shortened it to just Poupon. So I have a hair named Poupon. And actually now I have like five Poupons. So we're going gray. Number eight, I think this one was shared in an earlier video because I did tell the whole story of my first kiss. I peed in my pants during my first kiss. It wasn't like a whole stream of pee. It was just a trickle, one drop. I was so nervous and I let a little pee out. Nine, I am obsessed with the island of Hawaii and I've never been in my whole life. I honestly don't talk about this a lot online, but people do ask me frequently, what type of YouTubers do you watch? And the answer is I watch all these YouTubers who live in Hawaii and who have this like tropical island life. Number 10, I was the vice president of my high school senior class, which is maybe not that fun of a fact, but I thought it was fun because it did mean that I was able to give a speech at my high school graduation. And you know, while we're here, I think I'll just tell you this wasn't on the list, but Michael didn't come to my high school graduation. So we were dating, but he was home from college, but I think he was starting his summer internship and he chose to go to the internship instead of coming to my high school graduation. I still hold it against him. It's the only mistake he's ever made in his life. Number 11, I am obsessed with all fermented food. Pickles, olives, sauerkraut, anything that's soaking in brine or vinegar. I only present this as a fun fact because Michael hates all those foods. He can't stand the taste or the smell, but that's a fun fact about me. I could pretty much live off of fermented foods. Number 12, there's a product that I like to say I invented. Um, I never actually patented it, but I invented it in my mind years back. And ever since then, I've seen different iterations of this product on the market and I've seen people talking about it. And every single time I say, that was my idea. This came about when I was really young and I would always have to pee in the car when we were traveling. And I always thought that as a girl, you're at a major disadvantage when it comes to peeing because you can't just like stand up and pee anywhere out of the car. You also have to wipe, like, I don't know. It was just a lot. I invented this cone. If you imagine, it's the shape of like a traffic cone and you put it over yourself and essentially turns your vagina into a penis. <laughs> Shape-wise, you know, like it helps the pee come out neatly so that you're not peeing on your legs. I had a couple of working names for this product. It was either the PPTP. I think Michael chimed in at one point and we called it the She Pee. I think that's a great name. But yeah, I think this product is now out there in many forms. But if you ever see it, just remember it was my idea. <laughs> this leads me into number 13, which is that when I was really young, but not that young, <laughs> I was maybe about 12. I was in the car with my family. We were driving home from somewhere and I really had to pee. And I said to my dad, I have to pee. And he said, we'll be home in two minutes. And I said, I can't wait. And there was a towel in the back seat. And I took this towel and I put it on the floor of the car. And I said to my dad, I have to pee on this towel. And he was like, don't you dare pee on the towel. We'll be home in two minutes. And I just let myself go. And I peed on the towel. Number 14, I only ever met one grandparent of mine. So both of my dad's parents passed away before I was born, actually even before my older brother Robbie was born. And then my mom's dad passed away a little bit later on, but still before we were born. So we only ever met my mom's mom. That's obviously sad, not necessarily fun, but it is just a fact about my life. And something that's nice about it is that Allie and I were both named after our grandmothers. So Allie's name is Allison Louise, and our maternal grandmother was Louise, and I'm Lucinda Beatrice, and our paternal grandmother was Beatrice. And now we're moving on to fun fact number 15. So speaking of names, my first name Lucinda came from one of my mom's really close friends, Lucinda Scala Quinn. She is a famous chef. She used to work for Martha Stewart. She is a TV host and a presenter and has cookbooks. And my mom always tells us that when she wanted to use the name, she asked her friend Lucinda if she could use that name. And Lucinda's nickname was Cindy. So she said to my mom, you can call her Lucinda, but you have to promise me that you will give her the nickname Lucy instead of Cindy. I guess she always wished that she was called Lucy. 
Personally, I like Lucy and I like Cindy too. And actually my dad calls me Cindy quite frequently. Number 16 is that my family used to be in the bread business. So pretty much my whole life growing up until I was in seventh grade, my dad was the owner of Fink Baking Company. It was a company that was passed down from his dad, maybe even from his dad before that. And they provided fresh loaves of bread to places all across New York City, hospital schools, Yankee Stadium, stuff like that. This is kind of ironic now that I have celiac disease, but I spent my whole childhood basically going into giant rooms with these huge vats of dough. So I don't know what most kids do when they're playing work, but our idea of playing work as children was picking up a fake telephone and saying, yes, I'll have two loaves of pumpernickel, one loaf of rye, and two loaves of white. We are just about halfway through here, so I'm gonna pause really quickly to tell you about Fabletics and their May collection. Okay, so I mentioned at the start of this video that this outfit outfit is from Fabletics. I know a lot of people who really to this day still think of Fabletics as only activewear like leggings and sports bras, but I'm telling you their collection is expanding and pretty much everything I wear around my apartment all day, whether I'm shooting or editing or just working or working out is Fabletics. So this is one of their knit sweaters. It's one of my favorite materials. This one has a few buttons, which actually makes it look like it's a lifestyle sweater. And I put this matching bralette under it that's also knit and is just very comfortable and stretchy. And here I'm just pairing it with these really cute sweatshirt shorts. They have pockets. So this is the Sandra crew neck sweater. It's the same material, really, really soft and silky. Also like kind of heavy, like it's, it's definitely a substantial sweater material and it feels like really good quality and really soft. Honestly, it kind of reminds me of some elements of my branding to be honest. And whenever I look at this, I just can't believe that this is from a brand that most people just associate with being a workout brand. This is like work appropriate, so cute. And this one also has a matching bralette. So this is the Kate sweater knit bralette. I love these bralettes so much. They have no padding. They're just really silky and smooth. They're stretchy, they're not constricting. And the knit fabric is just so soft. I wish I could let you feel it. This is the Courtney sweatshirt. It's kind of like an off-white neutrally tone, and the Daria Terry Jogger too. So this is the perfect sweatshirt and sweatpant combo to pair together if you wanna get that monochromatic look. I just feel like it kind of brings your whole look together and it's almost like you're wearing a really comfortable uniform that is stylish and looks good, but it's also just a sweatshirt and sweatpants. So as you can tell, I'm kind of obsessed with the May styles. New styles drop every Thursday on Fabletics' website and if you are a VIP, you get some incredible perks. So if you've been looking for new workout clothes or loungewear clothes and you're thinking of trying them out, I would highly recommend using my link down below and signing up to become a VIP. You'll basically take a brief style quiz to see what sorts of outfits you're gravitating towards. As a VIP, you can skip any month, so there's no minimum cost that you need to pay per month. If you feel like you don't need any more workout clothes or loungewear in that month, you can just skip it and you will not be charged. Also being a VIP, VIP gives you exclusive access to some collections that are not available to everyone else. And I'm so in love with their mission of empowering people to feel comfortable in their workout clothes and celebrating every single body type. So use my link down in the description box. You can get any two bottoms for $24 plus 50% off your entire order and free shipping just by becoming a VIP today. All right, back to my fun facts. Number 17, I have braces built in behind my teeth. They're not actually braces, like the brackets that stick out. It's kind of just like a flat retainer that is behind my front four teeth. When I got my actual braces off, I got this built-in thing put there and I think it just stays forever or until a dentist says this needs to come off. Uh -huh. Can you see it? I hope you could see that. Number 18 is that speaking of braces, I actually had braces twice in my life. So I got braces back in sixth grade and I had them sixth grade, seventh grade, eighth grade, maybe got them off in the very beginning of ninth grade. And I thought I was golden. I was like, I just had braces for years. My teeth are gonna be straight now. How amazing is this? And what no dentist told me was that when you go through puberty and you get your period, not only are you going through puberty, but like your whole jaw is gonna change. 
So my whole face and jaw changed when I went through puberty and a couple of my teeth shifted majorly to the point where I had to make the decision of do I wanna just like live with my teeth moved or do I wanna get braces again even though I've already had them for three years and I thought I was in the clear. And my junior year of high school, I made the decision to just get them back on. But it was my junior year of high school which is a little embarrassing because nobody in my school had braces at that point still. I ended up getting the clear braces and I had them for Michael's senior prom. So Michael was a year ahead of me and I was wearing braces at his senior prom. 19, I don't know if even my mom knows this or any of my friends except for my one friend Rose who was with me for this. I took a pregnancy test my first day of college. <laughs> And this is because I think I was so excited slash nervous about going to college. I just didn't get my period for that one month. And I think when I first got to the campus, I was convinced that I wasn't getting my period because I had probably gotten pregnant over the summer. I felt this like freak out that, oh my God, I just got here to college and now I'm gonna have to go home and have a baby. <laughs> it was negative, but it was quite the experience. Number 20, I don't really think I have a handwriting. I think most people have a handwriting that's very identifiable. I know Michael has this. I could identify anything he's written from a mile away. And I was so fascinated with handwriting growing up that I used to change my handwriting all the time. Like I would experiment with different handwriting styles. Sometimes I really liked big bubbly letters. Other times I liked them, you know, tall and narrow. I used to have notebooks where I would just copy letters over and over again until I was forming the letters the way I liked them. But even to this day, I just like don't think I have a handwriting. 21, I love moving and I love changing around my space. When I was little, I used to push my bed to all different corners of my room. I experimented with an ottoman in the middle of the room. At one point, I wanted my bed to be the ottoman in the middle of the room. Number 22, on our honeymoon in Thailand, Michael and I, we went to Phuket for our first stop and we went to this island on a boat and we were flying our drone up in the air and it was running out of battery. And the drone kept saying, come down, bring the drone to home. But Michael thought, you know, it will come home if it's dying. He thought it would come home, but that's not what happened. Instead, it basically ran out of battery over the ocean and started coming down towards the water. And I was kind of out in the ocean, like near it, but not close enough. And I saw it was coming down to the water and all of a sudden it just starts going beep, beep, beep as it was gonna land in the water. I just went sprinting to the drone. And along the way, I was running on rocks and coral and I don't even know what else. I didn't get there in time, so the drone crashed into the water. And by the time I got there, it was kind of underwater, but I got it and I went to shore. My feet were completely cut up and bleeding and Michael had to carry me back to the boat. I had to go to the infirmary at the hotel and get like creams and alcohol swabs and just like, it was day two of our honeymoon and I destroyed my feet. And in the coming days we had so many walking tours of Phuket. We were going to see all these temples and my feet were destroyed. Number 23, I don't think anyone knows this, but at our wedding, you've probably seen my wedding video. You know, I walk down the aisle, I go around the circle of our chuppah and then I step up onto the chuppah with Michael. That one step up, you can't tell, maybe you can as I'm saying this, but I basically stepped onto my dress and came this close to tripping on my way up to the hookah. What you can see in the video is that I kind of like waver a little and grab Michael's hand and then I, I go like, huh, I don't know what I was doing. Like a laughter face, but I only laughed because I was in front of 200 people and I almost fell on my face on my first step up to the hookah in my wedding dress. 24, this I've definitely shared on Instagram, but have not shared it on YouTube yet. So remember when I was having some major headaches and I went to get some brain scans to confirm everything was okay? Well, everything is okay, but what I learned in that brain scan is pretty bizarre. So everyone has these two large veins in their brain that are called the transverse sinus. And those two veins help your brain drain blood. My scan came back showing I only have one of those veins. <laughs> The other vein appeared to be missing. I then had a follow-up appointment with a neuroradiologist who is used to looking at scans like that and he confirmed for me that I don't have an absence of the transverse sinus on the left side. I just have 
a really small one on the left side. Number 25, I sleep with my retainers in every single night. At first I used to use the metal ones with like that, you know, plate on the top of your mouth. Now I just have like a clear tray that I use on the top and bottom. I really feel like it helps me with grinding my teeth because I find that I grind my teeth as I sleep, but I also think it is keeping my teeth in place and in a straight line and I wear it every single night without fail and then I brush it in the morning like it's my own mouth. 26, my childhood crush was Benjamin McKenzie who played Ryan on the OC. And this is very funny because this guy looks absolutely nothing like my current husband, Michael, but I was really into him. I think I had a poster of him in my room. Benjamin McKenzie, if you're listening, you were the one, but you're not anymore. 27, if you're curious what my freshman dorm looked like at Johns Hopkins, where I lived with my twin sister, Allie, in a small dorm room, there's actually a video of me giving a tour of my freshman dorm room, and it's on YouTube. All you have to do is type in Lucy Fink dorm room. I basically gave a tour of my dorm. It was AMR2 Baker House, room 218. Number 28, you know that song? It goes, it's my life. Okay, you know this song. So, when I was young, and I used to hear that song, the line, I ain't gonna live forever, freaked me out. It just made me think I was gonna die one day, and I really did not like thinking about that. Now, as an adult, I'm not as afraid of the concept of death. Obviously, I don't wanna die, but I'm not as afraid of it. So, when I would listen to this song, I would sing, it's my life, it's now or never. And then I would hold my ears and go, la 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 la, and like block it out completely. Number 29, speaking of things I was scared about, I used to just get a little bit scared at night in the dark. I feel like our neighborhood was pretty quiet and I like noise. And I remember when I was little, the one thing I would think about constantly when I was lying in bed was the fact that SpongeBob was out there right now in Bikini Bottom with Sandy and Patrick and Mr. Krabs and he was there. I don't think I registered the fact that it was a cartoon and that it was made up. I actually think I thought that Bikini Bottom was a place and anytime I was scared, like all I had to think about was the fact that SpongeBob was doing something right now that I would probably see on the show later. That really helped me get through childhood. <laughs> Number 30, I think I've shared this online maybe once or twice on Instagram. A fact about me is that I actually have always struggled to put on weight. Allie and I both. I remember there was one point we were growing up, a doctor told my mom that we should try to put on some weight. I don't know if this is still what doctors would tell people today, but the doctor just told my mom to give us a milkshake every single night with whole milk, ice cream, that was the medicine that he gave us. And this is gonna lead me into number 31. My parents did what most parents did during the time we grew up, but they just, I don't think they had as much access to the information about health that we have today. So what I wanted to share for 31 is what my childhood diet consisted of. So my parents were amazing at cooking meals and making sure that we had like a really well balanced home cooked dinner every single night. So I will say that my dinners were always very healthy, vegetables, really healthy meats, like good meals. But my breakfast and my lunch and my snacks and whatever I ate throughout the rest of the day was an atrocity. Every single morning I would wake up and for breakfast I would either have a bowl of really sugary cereal like Fruit Loops, Cookie Crisp, Lucky Charms. I would have a full cup of orange juice, just so much sugar. Always just something really, really sweet and sugary for breakfast. Then I would go to school and for lunch I would pretty much always get a grilled cheese on white bread with a Snapple and a Chipwich. I hope you know what a Chipwich is. I think I had one every single day for about eight years of my life. Then I would come home from school and it was snack time and I would alternate between having a literal whole sleeve of Oreos soaked in a cup of whole milk that I would eat with a spoon or Fruit by the Foots, Gushers, or Dunkaroos. Then I would have that healthy dinner that I told you about but we would always follow it with a milkshake or ice cream or just candy. Eating like that didn't affect my weight 
weight. I think I just have a naturally fast metabolism and I definitely turned out okay and I corrected myself. My diet looks nothing like that anymore and of course now I'm celiac so being gluten free I don't eat anything with gluten but I also just don't eat a lot of processed things or sugar and candy even though I still love it. I know it's really not good for my health. Number 32. This one is sad and I have not shared this on the internet. Do you remember in a Try Living with Lucy episode I did a video about indoor gardening. One of the ways that I started indoor gardening was that I got a fish named Buttercup and I had this like aquaponic garden in my apartment where there were microgreens growing on top of the fish. So I made a video about this, got the fish, I fell in love with Buttercup. Michael was actually like not that into Buttercup when we first got her, but then a couple days went by and he came home and surprised me with all this stuff for Buttercup and I was so excited about it. We left the city for a few days for Memorial Day that year and when we came home, the aquaponic system had malfunctioned basically and there was a lot of mold that had been growing in the roots of the greens and because it's just like a filtration system, that mold just went right back into the water and poisoned Buttercup. We came home, she was covered in mold and she died. I lost it. I started hysterically crying. It was devastating. It was my first pet I ever had as an adult and it died in like a week actually. This happened before the video even went live on Refinery's YouTube channel. So even before the world knew about Buttercup, she was dead. I was just so ashamed that I had killed this fish and I was, it was kind of at a time in my life when I was like nervous that like fish advocates were gonna come for me and be mad at me that I killed the fish or that it died on my watch. And actually after the video went live, I got a lot of questions, how's Buttercup, how's Buttercup? And I just didn't respond to any of the questions. And actually a couple of people reached out personally to ask me how she was doing. And to those people, I said, she's great, we actually gifted her to a friend. I just lied. If you're one of those people, forgive me, I lied. And if I ever get a fish again, I will not put it in a system like that. Just had to tell you. And number 33, the final thing that you definitely don't know about me. This one, uh, actually my parents, don't know, they're probably gonna call me after this. But when I was really little, I was in my parents' room one night, I had a thought of what would happen if I called 911. <laughs> I was just curious because I had never dialed 911 before and I was really curious like what it would sound like on the other end of the line, who was gonna pick up. So I picked up the phone next to my parents' bed and I dialed 911, it rang, someone picked up and immediately I hung up because I didn't have an emergency and I, I kind of thought like, that's over with. Thank God, now I know what happens and nothing, you know, no repercussions. Two minutes later, our doorbell rings and I hear my mom scream, it's the police and my dad, you know, they go to the door and I didn't realize that if someone hangs up, they go to the scene because they wanna make sure everything's okay. So anyway, police showed up. I realize now that it was in the middle of a day when I was homesick. I was the only one that could have called the police. I heard my mom's footsteps coming up to her bedroom because I knew she was gonna say, did you just call the police? So I pretended to be asleep. She walked in, I heard her say, she's asleep and closed the door and like went back downstairs and must have told the police it must have been a mistake, wasn't us, everything's fine and they sent the police away, but it was me. So mom and dad, if you're watching this, if you remember that incident, I'm so, so sorry, I was just curious. It's all good, I will never do it again. And that's it, those are the 33 facts that I hope you didn't know about me, but I hope you're really glad that you've learned them now. Let me know down in the comments which one is your favorite or if you have any similar stories about yourself as a child or today. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. Now that you heard the fun facts, I hope you liked at least one of them. And hit that red subscribe button down below. I'm always so excited when new people join my YouTube family because this is the platform where I have the biggest audience and where I put most of my energy when it comes to content creation. Thank you so much for coming back and I'm so excited to see you next time right here on YouTube. Bye everyone.